I'm Mark Stewart. Thanks for listening. I wanted to give reasons why, if inaugurated in January 2019, Connecticut citizens can expect within a year a noticeably better Connecticut. I will move fast. Remember, I'm running for election along with good legislator candidates. Some are currently sitting in the legislature, not many. Most of them ought to be ousted or make a quick 180 degree turn in the next, well, 10 months. Those who replace them hopefully allied with a liberty-minded governor who will not tax people and certainly won't tax younger generations for profligate current spending. That is a regime that will take hold. Now, you can expect at the same time better schools. That can change within seven months when first 500 takes effect and new private schools and less regulations on the existing public schools come into play. Business friendly atmosphere, you'll feel it. And business people will know it. That they can do more things faster without fear of so many lawsuits. We still protect people where businesses might be predatory, where they might be really operating in an unsafe way, but the current regime doesn't even do that. Next, Connecticut is not going to be friendly to incessant government welfare. We will give people who have a sudden hard time a leg up. But if you prove that you are not trying to get yourself work, don't expect long benefits from the state because people in the state who are working feel ripped off by those who choose not to work. We've let go of requirements to even look hard for jobs. It's a joke right now. You're not going to have that benefit anymore. We will cut back on state welfare with the expectation that private welfare for very good things will be bigger and more attenuated to the things that are needed. Private welfare can do that far better than government. And this is not just theory. We're putting it into play now. Look at the funds that we are privately working on to raise money for good stuff that the legislature later on may or may not fund. Finally, crime. You'll see less of it. Now, the worst crime, not the worst, but the most prevalent for Connecticut. Connecticut's relatively good um, statistically on the violent crimes and the armed robberies, but we're preyed on by cyber criminals. Maybe more so than most people because Connecticut has a lot of sophisticated people with a lot of money and they become targets. Well, you who may be thinking about a theft of identity, a theft of assets, controlling somebody's property through the internet, you better think three or four times because our Cybercrime Institute within a year of operation will have graduates who will find you. And if we get jurisdiction over you, expect to be in the hole a long time. If I have my way, and there is a death penalty reinstated here in Connecticut, you're not free of that either, okay? There is an equation. And though I'm not saying this is a tried and true correlation, there's a cost to having to police against cybercrime. If a detective squad is spending $500,000 to root out your cybercrime activities. It can't spend that deterring violent crime that might result in murder. So, your dainty activity stealing from us, in a way, costs someone his life. I will make that argument. Whether people buy it or not, I'm still going to make that argument as a way to stand up for the citizens of Connecticut. You prey on multiple citizens' bank accounts, you're going to face really tough justice. Connecticut will be better for it. People say, gee, that doesn't sound compassionate. Somebody who does restitution, 
who actually pays families back for the harm he's caused, who actually counsels other people to stay away from the criminal path. That's a person who will get appeals heard by my pardons board. I think they have to hear them anyway. But there will be more receptiveness for maybe getting out of that awful sentence. You don't do restitution? Don't plan to be approved by a pardons board, whatever your crime. I look forward to making Connecticut a lot better with you starting in January 2019.